Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. I am doing a lot of mentoring both on work and off work and I'm also doing a lot of technical interviews. So wanna take a guess on what is one of the topics that most people struggle to understand? Well, probably you guessed it right, it's software architecture. So if you feel that you are also struggling to understand or to grasp different concepts about software architecture then this video is for you. I'm about to share some insights that will make you understand why you are actually struggling and obviously also finding some tools to overcome that. But before we get started know that I am doing a lot of content both here but also on other platforms and on other types of media. For instance we have a fairly new Code Wrinkles blog where we share some articles or thoughts or insights that you might want to consume in a reading way. And I have also pretty recently started a newsletter that will definitely help you to become a better software engineer not just a better code monkey. So make sure to not miss anything out and head over to the description of this video and follow me on all the other platforms and subscribe to the newsletter. Now let's go back to software architecture and ask ourselves why does it seem so complicated? And I know that when it comes to this type of topics and when we feel that we struggle a lot to grasp or to understand some topics, we tend to become downhearted and self-doubtful. But let me tell you this, it's definitely not you. So if you find yourself in a spot where you are saying maybe I'm not good enough, then please don't do that. Stop doing this, it's definitely not you. And I will share you and I will show you in this video exactly why I think that it's not you. Okay, but if it's not you, then where does the problem lie? Well, it's definitely in the content that you consume thinking that you want to learn something. And I'm not talking only about videos here, I'm talking about content around software architecture that you might find in blog articles, that you might even find in some books, but also obviously in videos and on LinkedIn. Oh boy, did I say LinkedIn? Well, yeah, indeed, LinkedIn is maybe one of the worst places where you could look for advice when it comes to software architecture. In the end, I think it might be a good reason why Nick Chapsas is so busy with his police department series. So yes, stay away from it when it comes to software architecture, and I mean LinkedIn, not Nick Chapsas. Now let's get back to our main story here. So the problem with content around software architecture is that it constantly promotes three very big mistakes that totally mess up with your brain and create more confusion. And these three main mistakes are in my opinion, first one what I would call spaghetti code. The second one is opposing concepts that are actually not opposable. And the third mistake is that content doesn't really stimulate your critical thinking. So let's dissect them one by one because this will help us create awareness about the problems and that would in turn give us some hints on how can we find some tools that we can overcome the struggles when it comes to software architecture. So the first one is what I call spaghetti content, but you can call it also big ball of mud content or any other similar wording. Bottom line here is that it's the type of content that has a lot of buzzwords in it. And by the way, is there any contest out there that I'm not aware of contests like how many buzzwords can you fit into one single piece of content? Please let me know because I might want to also sign up for that. So here's how you can pinpoint this type of spaghetti content. It usually goes something like this. Do you want to learn about clean architecture? Sure, here's an article. But since we're at it, let's also season it with a little bit of domain driven design. Let's bring into it also some CQRS concepts, but also maybe talk about microservices and why not maybe even event sourcing. So let's mix everything up together and you get a very practical clean architecture article, video, book or course. Or do you want to understand domain driven design? Sure, no problem, here's a course about it, but since we're at it, let's also talk about microservices and obviously if we talk about microservices, we also need to talk about microservices communication patterns. And maybe let's also bring in here some CQRS and yeah, maybe event sourcing might also sound like a cool idea. Or another one, if you want to understand event sourcing, here's a course for that. But yeah, we're talking about event sourcing, but obviously we will also talk about Kafka and maybe even domain driven design because you can't do event sourcing without having Kafka or any other message broker, right? The problem with this type of content is that your brain gets bombarded with information that seems structured, but it's in fact unstructured and you don't understand anything from it. There's a saying that says that everyone's responsibility is no one's responsibility and this also applies to our discussion here. In the end you end up studying a ratatouille of different concepts and in the end nothing is really clear for you. But you know what the main problem here is? 
that because of the huge amount of different buzzwords and concepts, you get the illusion that you actually did understood everything and that you know a lot of things. However, you will come back to reality when you have to go through your next interview and you'll find out that actually nothing is clear for you. So the first step of not struggling with understanding software architecture is to start studying and understanding different software architectural patterns one by one, in isolation so to say, at least for the beginning. And as you will grow and as you will get the fundamentals right and understand the basic concepts of each theory or of each pattern, you will then later see that everything comes naturally together when you tackle different scenarios. For instance, when it comes to clean architecture, there are literally three aspects that makes an architecture clean. The first one is the layering according to technical responsibilities. The second one is decoupling through abstraction. And the third one is the inward flow of dependencies. So everything around clean architecture basically revolves around these three lines. So there's nothing about domain driven design in here. Yes, that's true. When you study clean architecture, you will see that there is a layer that's usually called domain, or you will also see the name entities. However, this doesn't really mean that you also need to go into domain driven design. In fact, you can definitely do clean architecture according to these three principles without settling any domain driven design concept. So my suggestion here would be to simply go to what clean architecture is, go to the original book, go to the original blog post by Uncle Bob Martin and try to implement that in a project. Don't think about all the articles that you have read about it. Try to think yourself and try to get the information from the source and apply that information in your project that will really make you understand clean architecture. Regarding event sourcing, yes, it is a fundamentally different way of designing software. But in the end, event sourcing is only about storing events instead of storing state in your database. And when you need some state, then you basically create that state by replaying the events that you have stored. That's event sourcing in a nutshell. There's no SecureS here. There's no Kafka. There's no communication. It's just the way that you store things. You can do or implement event sourcing in a regular and very simple to do application without any other fancy thing around it. Bottom line, try to filter out all the noise that you get around the concept that you want to study. Concentrate only on one concept at one time. Eventually go to the source where that concept was initially raised or was, was initially discussed first and try to implement that concept in some kind of project but without being influenced by other type of content that provide you with a lot of other buzzwords. Let's now move over to the second big problem that I see with content around software architecture and that is that it a lot of times opposes things that are not opposable. And this one is actually worse than spaghetti content and the reason why I say this is that authors around spaghetti content, they are usually not wrong from a technical perspective because a lot of times it happens that in one project and we'll see a little bit later in another discussion point that you need to implement several different of, of those concepts. But from a didactical point of view, they are totally wrong because that's not the way that the human brain is set up to learn. However, in this case of opposing things that are not opposable, often authors are totally wrong and they try to oppose different concepts that they read about of them in documentations, but the way they are opposing concepts show that they have a total lack of practical understanding of those concepts and probably never work with them in real life projects. For instance, recently I saw a post that was opposing ports and adapters architecture to clean architecture, and I saw other posts that were opposing, for instance, onion architecture to clean architectures. And you get a lot of similar type of combinations when you see two different type of architectural patterns that are opposed. But guess what? That's actually totally wrong. So let me get back to the words of Uncle Bob. So in his original post about clean architecture, he says something around these lines. Those these architectures all vary somewhat in their details. They are very similar. They all have the same objective, which is the separation of concerns. They all achieve the separation by dividing software into layers. Each has at least one layer for business rules and another for interfaces. And now comes the important part to so pay attention to it. The diagram at the top is an attempt at integrating all these architectures into a single actionable idea. So guess what? These are all clean architecture. 
Sounds strange, isn't it? And you might also ask, okay, but why is this actually important? Well, it is very important because in the moment that you see some content that opposes two concepts, your brain is wired up to think about those concepts in total opposition. And this in turn will make you have an improper understanding of said topics right from the beginning. But if you start from the idea that all these concepts are actually flavors of the same actionable idea, then your brain is already wired up, is already set up in a totally different way that will give you a better understanding of those specific concepts. So context is important when it comes to learning, and I can give you a very nice analogy, for instance, when you talk to ChatGPT, and in general, when you talk to such large language model, one very important thing is to get really accurate answers or the best possible answers is to first set the context. Bottom line is that setting up an appropriate context for your learning experience is a very important thing that will affect the way that you learn and what you actually learn and what you understand from what you actually study. Another very strange opposition that I hear a lot and I heard it recently in an interview is something like that. We don't do clean architecture in our project, we do microservices. What? In which universe are these two concepts opposable? We need to be aware that different architectural concepts or different architectural patterns were actually created to solve some very specific problems. In case of clean architecture, with all its different flavors, I would say that it was created to solve the big problems that we had with traditional layered systems that were heavily coupled. So clean architecture came out as a concept to help us with structuring code in a way that it is more decoupled, it's easier to test and it's easier to maintain. That's the problem it was trying to solve. Microservices, on the other hand, is a concept that tackles a total different challenge and in my opinion that would be, okay, how can we scale our applications? And the thing is that in each microservice you can actually have clean architecture, there's no problem with that. So you see that a lot of times we need to combine different architectural patterns or concepts in order to deliver an end product. By the way, in this regard, Derek Comartin from the Code Opinion channel did actually a very nice analogy in one of his videos. He was saying something like that software architecture is somewhat like a buffet architecture. So you can imagine it something similar to going into a restaurant where you will pick up a menu and you will see a lot of items there. And based on what you would actually like to consume or to eat or to drink, you can order from that menu that those items that make a lot of sense to you. So it's very similar also to software architecture. You find yourself in a certain problem in a certain context then you have this big menu of architectural patterns or concepts that you have studied and that you've mastered and that you know the fundamentals on. And then you can make some informed decisions on what exactly to pick from there as appropriate tools to solve the problems and the challenges that you are currently facing. So to summarize this problem with software architecture content, I would say that it's important to always understand exactly what each pattern does and don't shoot yourselves in the foot by consuming content that often oppose different architectural concepts that might actually not be opposable. If you have made it this far in this video, congratulations, then I would say that you are on a very good way to stop struggling with software architecture. But before we wrap up, there is another third very important problem that I see with most of the software architecture content out there, and that is it doesn't stimulate your critical thinking. And from my point of view, this problem comes in two different flavors. The first one is what it is presented usually as best practice or industry standard or at least something that is backed up by a certain authority. And the moment this happens, your brain actually freezes down. Because you would say, dude, who am I to go against what is a best practice or an industry standard or against what a certain expert says? So you would stop critically thinking about those specific aspects and you might have the impression or the illusion once again that you know that you understand these concepts because they are used as an industry standard, as a best practice, but in the end it will turn out when you need to make some decisions that you don't understand the basics right. And the second flavor that doesn't stimulate your critical thinking is that it depends. Now, it depends became kind of like a cliche. Cliché are usually a bad thing, but some clichés that might also have something good about them. And technically, that's obviously correct. In a lot of scenarios, in a lot of different circumstances, it really depends. However, this kind of setup in the discussion is actually worthless or useless if it is not immediately followed up by a very clear explanation about 
what it depends on. And I'm sure that you noticed a lot of times people or authors or commenters or people that basically take part in discussions, they always use this it depends, something like a bailout card to avoid showing that they actually don't understand the fundamentals right. Inconsciously, you might tell yourself that, okay, if they use this as a bailout ticket, then I probably can use this as a bailout ticket too. However, the moment that you will step into your next interview or the moment that you will be faced in a scenario where you need to take some informed decisions that could potentially also have a big financial impact, this bailout card will not work for you. Therefore, simply categorizing something like it depends and not caring about what it actually depends on is a very bad thing that usually makes you struggle with understanding these concepts about software architecture. And this pretty much wraps it up. However, as a summary, there are really three actionable items that you can take away from this video and that you can implement starting from right now and that will help you avoid struggling with software architecture. The first actionable item is to start studying or learning about different architectural concepts or patterns one by one in isolation. This will help you get and understand the fundamentals right and the more you will learn these fundamentals, you will then suddenly have aha moments and realize that a lot of the concepts that you have studied actually come together very naturally. The second important actionable items is to stop consuming content or learning from content that opposes architectural concepts or patterns. Very often these oppositions are technically and factually wrong. But it's even worse than that because this type of oppositions also set your brain up in a certain way that it will be very hard for you to understand those concepts because you have a different context in which you try to understand them. And last but not least, the third actionable item is to only consume content that stimulates your critical thinking, which means content that doesn't rely on the argument of authority by presenting everything as a best practice or industry standard or just bringing up names, and also avoid content and positions that start with it depends but that are never followed up with a certain explanation which are exactly the things it depends on. If you did find this video useful for you and insightful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. This will help this video be discovered by others easier. And if you are for the first time here, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on other cool stuff that we have ongoing here on the Cold Wrinkles channel. And if you have any question or just want to get a discussion starting regarding one of the topics that we discussed, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment or your thought and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time I wish you the very best.